Okay, this little lecture um, is to help explain the technique of centrifugation or using a centrifuge, using centrifugal force, <laughs> I never say that word right, um, as a way of separating molecules. So what you can think of um, is that you have a solution um, with lots of different types of molecules. And when I say different type, my hand reads. different molecules in a solution. And we're basically going to spin them in this um, rotor in the centrifuge and you're going to spin it round and round and round and the heavier stuff is going to go towards the bottom of your tube and the lighter stuff will stay in the supernatant. Okay. So <clears throat> um, you have different molecules in a solution and it's a means or a technique to separate these different molecules. Now these molecules, based on size and density, and density you can kind of also think of as buoyancy, so how it floats. Um, that will be kind of more important in um, the second type of centrifugation. Okay. So the idea is you have this um, molecules in a solution and after centrifugation the stuff on the bottom, the solid stuff we call a pellet. And the liquid that has this, the more solid stuff removed is called the supernatant. Or you might just see it called the soup. S-U-P. Stands for supernatant. So this is the liquid. And um, there's likely still particles suspended um, in the liquid. Okay, so let's talk about the two different types of centrifugation. So there's differential, and differential is basically a series of centrifugation um, we'll call them steps. So you're, it's going to be repetitive um, but at different speeds. So what I mean by repetitive is that here's your starting solution. And you can see it has all these different size molecules. And you do low speed, so you spin one time. right? And the really big stuff comes to the bottom in the pellet. And so you leave that pellet and you take all the liquid and you put it in a new tube. And then you spin it again. And now you're spinning it a little bit faster so that like the medium sized molecules come down to form a pellet. And then you take all this liquid off and spin it again. Now you do it a little higher speed so you can get smaller and smaller particles coming down. So each time you spin or centrifuge, It's at a different speed. And molecules are separated into pellets. Okay. So you're doing a series <coughs> of spins 
you're repeating this, <coughs> but you're changing the speed higher and higher and higher so that you can get the smaller and smaller stuff. So this example is showing um, if you have, <coughs> excuse me, whole cells or big things like nuclei, those are going to come down first because they're really the biggest. And think about in a cell, nuclei is big. Right? And then the next set of stuff comes down, the mitochondria, the lysosomes, the peroxisomes, and then the smaller stuff, um, small vesicles, and then even smaller stuff like ribosomes, macromolecules. Okay. So it's a way to, uh, like both of them, separate molecules based on their size. The pro, or the advantage of this, is it's pretty simple setup. All you need is solution and a bunch of centrifuge tubes and a centrifuge, and you do a spin and then move the liquid and do a spin and move the liquid. Okay. The con, the let's, is one. You can see it's many multiple steps as far as we've got to wait each time to centrifuge and um, it's not it's kind of what we call crude separation so it's not super accurate as you can see you can get mitochondria lysosomes peroxisomes all in this pellet so you're not fine detail separating you're getting things that are similar um, sizes, but you're not able to separate out things that are very similar. Um, so we call it a crude separation. So it, it gets rid of a lot of the junk. Um, and from here though, say you were interested in the mitochondria, you might use this other technique called density gradient centrifugation to really get more precise. So let's talk about that one. So density gradient centrifugation is a little bit different. Here in this liquid, it's called a density gradient, which I'm going to show you what that is in the next slide. And this is your sample. Okay. So <clears throat> differential, you have your sample all mixed up and you spin, spin, spin and collect these pellets. Density, what's happening here is you have thick, 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 um, very dense material to less thick and less thick and less thick and very thin. A lot of times this is what we call a sucrose gradient. Sucrose is sugar. So one of the ways to think about this is this is your maple syrup. Right? And then you water it down. And this is more like sugar water. Right? Not very dense, not very thick. So if you thought about taking your maple syrup and then taking some and diluting it with water and it gets a little more liquidy, that would be up here. And then you dilute it with water a little bit more and you dilute it with water a little bit more. So you have this density gradient, right? So gradient, think of like changing kind of like these colors, light blue to dark blue. You have this gradient made. You put your sample on top, you spin it, and then <clears throat> what you get is something called a band. So all of your molecules that are very similar collect at different layers. So think of this as you get layers. So, the advantage of this type of centrifugation is it's very accurate or precise. Separation. Okay, so it's, it's more precise than um, the differential centrifugation. The big disadvantage or challenge with it is making the gradient, making the layers. And it takes some skill to do this. 
So this next slide shows you one way to make a density, density gradient. Okay. So you start out, and here this is all sucrose, right? So 50% is going to be our syrup, 10% is our sugar water. And what you have to do is you have to layer these different solutions. So you first put in the lightest one. And then you put in a little bit thicker sugar water. Right? And so the lighter one's going to float on top. And then you put in some thicker and some thicker until you get the thickest. I know it doesn't look uh, super hard to do, but um, anytime you're, you're disrupting solutions by sticking these pipettes in there, um, you have to make sure you're not mixing things because you don't want it to become homogeneous. You want it to have all of these layers. All right? So, centrifugation summary. We have two different methods. We have density gradient. And we have differential. Okay. They're both going to start what we're talking about in cell biology is cells. So you take your cells and you basically break them apart so that you can get the nuclei and the mitochondria and the cytoskeleton. And then you either do differential where you have all these different pellets that you get, or you do density where you have these bands of molecules. And what this last part is showing you is how do you get those molecules out? So like here, it's easy, right? You have a pellet, you remove all the liquid, and you have your, your sample right there. How do you do that when your sample is in layers? Well, one way you do that is you poke a little hole at the bottom of the tube and let things drip out. And so what you're going to see here is first some liquid dripped out, and then um, you got your first, say, sample. And then some more liquid dripped out, and then you got your next sample. So these are called fractions, so just think of it as part. It's a way to collect um, the different things that you have separated. Okay, so I hope that helps you with uh, that technique, and we will look at using it uh, later in our cell biology class. Thanks.